Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. I usually focus on one productivity app per video. So today we're focusing on Ellie. Quick context, Ellie is a daily planning app. It's basically your to-do list and calendar combined. So that's the app that we're gonna be talking about today. So I just wrapped up a huge feature for Ellie and I was trying to figure out what to work on next. I have a feedback board where users can upvote the features that they wanna see in the app. And typically I just go on this feedback board and pick whatever's on the top of that list. And that's the general advice that people give. And honestly, the advice that I give on this channel too is listen to your users and then build what they're asking for. That's honestly the formula to building a successful product. But I decided to do the opposite of that and build something that isn't even on the feedback board at all. So I thought it'd be a cool video to show you why I go against my own advice sometimes and build things that literally no one has asked for. I'll be taking you through building this feature and all of the lessons that I learned along the way. So the feature I decided to work on is shared lists. So Ellie has a list feature where users can create lists like a personal list, a school list, and they can use it to organize tasks. This is a very basic feature in a daily planning app. But something I've always been curious about is what if users could share these lists with other users and then collaborate on them? Some common use cases I'm thinking about would be maybe planning a trip. So if you have a trip coming up, you can have a shared list with friends to divvy up booking the Airbnb, making reservations, all that stuff. Or if you live with someone, you can maybe have a shared grocery list or a chores list that you can collaborate on. Right now, Ellie is single player, meaning you just use it by yourself. And I've always been interested in ways to make it multiplayer where you can collaborate with people. So that's the feature that we're working on and literally no one has asked for this feature. But I think it'd be really cool to ship and it would add this new dimension to Ellie that doesn't exist right now So I told my friend about it and he was like that sounds awesome I would love to try to work on this with you So my friend Finney decided to tackle this feature with me and if you've seen my other videos You've seen that we've collaborated on features in the past And I'm really glad he decided to work on this with me because it actually made a huge difference as you'll see later in the video So before we get into building let me explain why I sometimes go against that advice and build things that literally no one has asked for. There's three main reasons. So the first reason I build these features is because there's a possibility that users aren't asking for it because they don't know they can ask for it or they don't know that something like this could exist. So in the case of this feature, when I looked at all of the big competitors in this space, no one else has a feature like this. There might be a reason for that or it could also be because no one has tried it yet. So I do this to really push the boundary because who knows, maybe I invent something that other competitors start adopting in the future. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is that when you pursue features like this, especially features that don't exist on the market, you usually run into a lot of problems and there's a ton of learning that you get by building features like this. And that's the case as you'll see later, I learned a ton of things from this feature. And so number two is really when you push the boundaries, you end up learning a ton. And in my opinion, I think that's a great enough reason to do this is to learn and to get better. So reason number three, I do these features, which sounds very unserious, but I promise it's actually really important is because it looks really fun. When you're working on a product like Ellie, which I wanna be working on for many, many years, I gotta really make sure that I'm interested in the long run and I don't get burnt out. A lot of the features that I work on are very complex, really challenging, and honestly, not that fun to work on. I gotta sprinkle in features like this to keep it interesting for myself. I do wanna clarify though, that just because I'm working on this feature does not mean it's going to make it into the final product. I'm having fun building this, but I'm not gonna throw something into the product that doesn't make sense just because I got bored. I'm gonna work on it, but I might not necessarily put it into the product if at the end it just doesn't make sense. Just wanted to clarify that. So those are the three reasons that I sometimes go against my own advice and work on things that nobody really asks for. Okay, so jumping into the feature, the first thing that we did was planning. So there were a lot of ways we could have taken this feature. Do we support notifications? So when someone makes a change to the list, do we notify the user somehow? Do we support commenting? Do we support assigning people to a task? We probably spent the entire first day just really talking through this and the pros and cons, but in the end we decided because because this was such an unconfirmed feature, like we don't even know if this is gonna make it into the product, let's start as small as possible. So no comments, no notifications, let's keep it as simple as possible. You could just share a list. When you make changes, other people can see those changes in a list. The barest minimum for collaboration. And this is where I'm really glad Finney decided to join me on this because if I didn't have these conversations with him and I was just working on this alone, I probably would have shipped this thing with comments and assignees, like I would have actually shipped that stuff. But after talking to him and we kind of thought to ourselves, okay, would we actually use some of these things like commenting? Probably not. If we wanted stuff like assigning and notifications and all that stuff, we would probably just use an actual project management tool like ClickUp or Linear or something like that. So project management features is something a lot of users have asked for, but after talking through this and kind of thinking about use cases, it became more clear to me that I don't wanna go down that route, at least for now. From this learning alone, this experimental feature has already paid off, to be honest. So once we decided on the scope of the feature, just share a list, users can edit the list, that's it. So we decided to work on the architecture of the feature. How are we actually going to implement this from a technical standpoint? And this was actually a very complex decision. I'm gonna 
simplify this a little bit, but we basically had two choices. So option one is what if we made a new section of the database? So this section is not tied to a specific users and this is where all of those shared tasks live. When a user is added to the shared task, they start pulling from this database. This is probably how most apps do collaboration features. The big con is that I would have to really rewrite the app to work with this new structure. This would take a long time, probably a month to be able to pull off because there's a lot of features that would be impacted by this. So that's option one, change the database structure, but then we'd have to change the app structure. So option two is what if we still had this separate database? This is a master list of all the shared tasks, but instead of the user pulling directly from it, we actually just make a clone of this data on each of the individual users. And then when the master gets updated, we just sync the instances that live on the user. So the way it would work is user A adds a task to the list, then the master list gets updated. User B is listening for changes, so then they see, oh, the master list is updated, let me pull those new changes. Now user B is in sync. It's a little more complex because instead of pulling from the master, we just basically make clones and we just have to keep them in sync with each other. The big pro is that I don't really have to change much of the front end code. The app can function exactly the same way because at the end of the day, it's still user A's list and user B list and they're just completely separate. It's just they're being constantly synced up by this master list. So we do go to the first route, which is very simple database -wise way more common, but my God, so much work on the front end. Or do we go option B, which is way overkill. It's such a convoluted system just to keep users in sync, but minimal changes on the front end. We decided to go option B. And the reason was, again, we don't even know if we're gonna ship this feature. This is just an experiment right now. So option one would probably take a month. Option two, we were like, we could probably do this in a day. So option two was the clear choice. The number one lesson I got from this was, I wish I thought about multiplayer a little earlier and just made a couple of choices early on in terms of database structure that would have made this a little bit easier for me now. So in terms of implementing, the UI was actually incredibly easy. It did take a day because I did try out a bunch of different versions of this. Like where do the shared lists live? Do they live among all the other lists? And then maybe there's like an indicator or even like an avatar of who it's shared with, just so you know, oh, this is a shared list or is there a separate section? So decided to roll with the separate section after playing around with it. But everything else was pretty easy because these are pretty standard features that a lot of project management tools have, like sharing, what that share sheet looks like, what does permissioning look like. But on the back end side, so the syncing, this is where most of the complexity was. There were just a lot of little edge cases we didn't think about. And I, I won't try to explain it here because it's kind of mind bending, but the way we wrote it, there's a lot of possibility for infinite loops. So this is where user updates here and master gets updated. Then master updates the user, then user updates the master, then master up this user. Like there's just a lot of possibilities for this to happen because of how we set up the syncing. So we did learn a lot of lessons to try to prevent these type of infinite loop situations from happening, which was really important because I would go bankrupt if that happened. But that was really good because if we do future integrations like a Todoist integration, we'll probably apply some of the same principles to make sure there is no infinite loops there because it does kind of use a very similar syncing technology to sync LE into Todoist, then Todoist back to LE. A lot of the same principles still apply. So these were some really good technical lessons that we learned about syncing. So because the scope was pretty small, this was actually a pretty quick implementation, like probably two days. But with any of these experimental features, the last thing that I had to do was put it behind a feature flag so I can control the rollout and then add analytics to make sure that while we roll it out, we see, okay, are users actually using this? Is this something that I wanna to release to everyone? Tracking is super important for these features where no one has asked for them. So you need to actually track if people are genuinely using them, where they're dropping off. And the service that I use for both the feature flags and the analytics is Posthog. Huge shout out to them for actually sponsoring this video. If you've been following along, you know that I've been recommending them way before they started sponsoring this channel. They're the ones that I recommend for feature flags and analytics. So let me show you guys what my implementation looks like. So in terms of feature flags, it's super simple. You create the feature flag and then you can set the parameters of when will this feature be active for these users. So in this case, I actually have a variable that I put on users called shared list enabled. When this is set to true, then this feature is active for users. And right now it's just basically me, Finney, and my girlfriend who are using this feature. So we're the only three users in the database that have this set to true. But it's really cool because when I open up the beta for this feature, I can just start adding this value to those users and then they get access to the feature instantly. And in terms of code, it's super simple. So here's an example code snippet, but it ends up being like three or four lines of code to implement this. So that's how I'm doing feature flags for this. So when I roll this out, in terms of analytics, Posthog allows you to track a couple of actions. The things that I'll be tracking and watching for are how many shared lists are being created, 
if they're being created, how many people are being invited? When people use this feature, how many shared lists on average do they create? Are they inviting people that are LE users or not LE users? So these are all things that I'm very interested and curious to see the data on. PostHog is a service that makes this really easy to track. I have a whole video on how I do analytics in PostHog, so I'll link that right here. So you can check that out if you want. This is the stack that I use to roll out the feature and to track the usage. We've been using it for two weeks. We've kind of ironed out all the bugs and I think I'm actually comfortable rolling this out to more users. We'll be running a beta period very soon and it should be interesting to see what we learn from that. Even though this is a feature that literally no one has asked for, I am very glad we did it. Learned a ton of lessons about building a good collaborative multiplayer experience. A lot of technical learnings about the sync engine, which I'll be bringing to future integrations. And then an important lesson that I don't want Ellie to become a project management tool, at least at this time. Even though the general advice is build stuff that people want, listen to your users. I hope this video shows you why it's okay to sometimes go against this advice and what happens when you do. If you like this kind of content, check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day about building productivity apps. And obviously if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe. But thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.